everybody. I'm Julia Pagel. I'm the Secretary General of MIMO, the network of European museum organizations. We are a network representing the museums in Europe, more than 30,000. And we are happy to welcoming you in our network if you want. So what are the main benefits of Open Glam to me? Well, I think museums are part of their community and their history. Their collections come with the history and societal connections, but sometimes these collections have been lost or ignored. So reconnecting and opening up and using our collections to help people understand and engage with their place in the world, complex topics, especially in times where traditionally agreed truths are being challenged is a duty and also a chance for museums to be part uh, and partner of their communities. So to answer this question again, I think a benefit of an open glam is that they can be actors in and for society, help making it better, more resilient, more creative, better connected and informed and open for a dialogue. Open glam to me means that we succeed in creating as many entry and engagement points as possible for as many parts of society uh, as possible with our collections. And for the sake of financial benefit and sustainability of museums, a more engaged and diverse audience also means that we will generate more income ultimately, selling more tickets, providing a more extensive offer around the museum, targeted programs around learning and creativity. Being relevant to a larger part of society also helps museums advocate for more and uh, sustainable public funding that goes beyond support for culture, but understands that uh, understands museums' role um, as agents for uh, social change, for resilience and cohesion. Yeah, and the barriers to open glam. From an organizational perspective, I think the three main reasons are resources, skills, and mindset. Let me elaborate on those three points. Uh, resources and skills, I think we're clearly lacking resources, human resources, people that support transition to an open museum, who create and maintain and develop the connection to their communities. Resources to develop, update and build necessary infrastructure to support opening GLAMs. Resources for organizational transformation to an agile organization. And very importantly, resources for capacity building to acquire knowledge and skills needed for new requirements and to learn how effectively steer change. I think currently the organizational setup of museum is often not really allowing for agile and flexible management, like ex uh, established internal dialogue among staff and flat hierarchies, decision making, allowing for new positions for these new requirements is still not common practice in museums, but these are the basic ingredients of an open glam. And in this context, one of our main concerns is that the culture sector runs on project funding logic, which hardly supports this type of organizational development, building new structures, investing uh, into internal capacity building and else. And then a point about mindset. Uh, open glam to me means the courage to try new things, new approaches, and to run the risk to fail. Through failing, we learn to make it better, but the mindset and also the funding structures in and off museums is uh, still very much rooted in traditional structures. So dealing with the resistance to change, which is completely normal because us humans don't like to change, means uh, seriously engaging in dialogue. In this context, uh, NEMO is currently involved in two EU funded projects that are helping to support those internal dialogues in museums uh, to increase their capacity. The project MOI, Museums of Impact, is developing a self-evaluation framework for museums to investigate and discuss work processes and setups to increase their impact on society. And the project Indiges is helping to assess museums' digital readiness through a self-assessment framework. I think a very important ingredient is informed decision-making. The sector really needs to get better at collecting and analyzing relevant information about their customers. We need sound metrics and methods to understand visitors' needs better 
and especially in the digital world um, to create relevant services and products for our communities. And then also very concretely for the digital sphere, I think we need certainty and knowledge about IPR issues, clear agreements on licenses to be able to really open up collections to reuse. Someone else telling me uh, something that opened up my eyes and mind about Open Glam. It wasn't so much uh, as someone else, but maybe a very general and basic insight about how central the question of access actually is. The fact that Article 27 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights pro proclaimed by the General Assembly of the United Nations in 1948 reads, everyone has the right to freely participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts and to share the scientific advancements and its benefits. So it's a human right. There's no further argumentation for me whether we should open up or not. We just have to. My personal message uh, to museums hesitating to opening up uh, collections is, that museums have for a long time collected, but not connected. As the ICOM definition of museum states, museums are in service of society. So reconnection, collaboration, and conversation with the community and the public is essential to gain the trust of a diverse society in constant change to ensure the relevance and the continuation of the museum sector in the future. And making this effort, and I know it's hard, is essential for the relevance of museums in society. Reflecting society's questions and concerns through the eyes of the community and deepening this relationship with the community means increasing the sustainability of the museum in the future.